Hello and welcome to the session. My name is Polly McPherson and I'm Associate Head of School for Enterprise, leading on the Knowledge Exchange, Enterprise and Creative Industry Agenda within the School of Art, Design and Architecture here at the University of Plymouth. Additionally, I'm a Professor of Design and the Low Carbon Devons Creative um, Industry Supervisor. In this marketplace session, we have two sections with three presentations in each. After each section, we will have a short time for some questions and answers. So please feel free to put some uh, in the comments on the side and we'll try, I'll try and make a point to get as many of those in the time frame. So let us begin with our first session titled Creative Commissions. My welcome, may I welcome to our three presentations, sorry, presenters. Gemma Sharman, who is the Green Mind Project Manor and Natural Infrastructure Officer at Plymouth City Council. Inda Nuttall from Mobility Hubs, the, the low, carbon Devon or sorry, low Carbon Team. And Dr. Emma Whitaker, who is the Low Carbon Devon's Creative Industries Research Fellow based here at the University. So we're now going to move on to Gemma is going to present first. Hello, welcome, Gemma. Hello, good morning. Um, good afternoon. Sorry, I already I did a presentation this morning. Um, hopefully, you can all um, see my screen now. Um, so, welcome. Yes, I'm the program manager for Green Minds at Plymouth City Council. But as you can see, it's very much a partnership project, including the University of Plymouth um, and and five other partners as well. Um, it's funded by the European Union through the Urban Innovation um, Actions, and it's. Um, Gemma, can I Sorry to interrupt. Can I ask you to put it, put it on to full uh, presentation mode? Oh, it is. Oh, hang on. Sorry, it's showing that on my screen. Hang on. I'll do it again. I'll stop and start. Sorry, it's showing full on mine. Let's see. If I try entire screen, that might help. Let's try again. How's that? Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Hooray, hooray. Yeah, so uh, funded by the um, Urban, Innov Urban Innovative Actions Programme. And it's really about um, looking at um, key urban challenges and seem to have a bit of a problem here. Gemma, I don't know if you can hear me, but you have frozen. <laughs> Maybe come out, come back in again. Modern technology. Okay, let's try it again. Oh, she's gone completely. Okay, so... We have lost Gemma. Um, may I suggest that we actually move on to Indy? Oh, Gemma's come back. <laughs> Gemma, we seem to have missed it. We lost you then. We froze you. I'm wondering whether it's because you went full screen, whether it's if you're happy just to go um, try it again, um, but just keep it as um, we can see the slides on the side. Sometimes that happens. Okay, let's have a look. Sorry about that. Right. Can you can you see that? Can you see that? Yeah. 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 That's good. yeah. Okay. We'll stick to that. Okay. All around. Great. Thank you. Um. Yeah. So yeah. So our vision was really about putting the um kind of trying to put nature at the heart of our decision makings, and to do that, that does mean really fundamentally challenging a lot of our existing attitudes and behaviours towards nature. And that's really not just uh, about kind of other people change it, but ourselves as, as individuals, but also partner organizations. And then, you know, starting to really build that bigger boat and, and trying to bring other sectors and stakeholders with us on that as well. And in terms of some of our broad aims, really, and one of the kind of keys for 
today's presentation is about how we connect people with nature. So through rewilding and nature-based projects on the ground that create habitat and diversity and also support community health and well-being as well. We also want to experiment with different types of delivery and land management approaches, which is where the um, urban rewilding um, focus comes in, but also how we can support communities to care and have longer term stewardship of those, place, of those places as well. And, and one of the elements of, of, of that stewardship is about how we can also encourage things like uh, nature-based enterprise um, in the process, as well as kind of more traditional engagement, I guess, in terms of volunteering, citizen science, those sorts of things. Um, we're really keen and we're working with the University of Plymouth on this, about how we use science and digital tools to make nature more exciting, more accessible. And then again, working with the University and, and, and other um, uh, organisations about how we capture that impact and then start to communicate that more widely and look at what could be potentially be scaled up into other areas. So sorry, I'm having to shift between screens now to sort of <laughs> kind of change this focus. So, um, it, so one of our approaches around urban rewilding and rewilding has been um, in the news a lot and a lot of research done on it in the last few years nationally and internationally, but less so on the urban environment. So we were really keen to look at this as a process of how we, I guess, start to loosen our control, how we kind of give nature more space to do what it needs to do. Um, and how we can kind of restore some of our habitat in Plymouth. But again, really keen, how, how do we do that in an urban context with ob obvious parameters that we have in terms of the built environment and kind of larger populations of people. So how do we bring people with us on that journey? How do we support connection to nature uh, for residents that live in the city, but also other professionals and, and disciplines that work in this area too? So we're really thinking about um, so the benefit to people, particularly in terms of health and well-being, but also actual practical solutions on the ground to kind of help manage things like flooding, air quality as well. I'll switch to the slide. <laughs> well, so because this is such a kind of big approach, we were wanted to kind of test this on kind of five key areas. And I won't go into this hugely because we're already probably behind time with the kind of tech stuff. But we are there's we're looking at a kind of strategic city part and central park particularly around the sustainable urban drainage and treescapes. Some of the habitat restoration in a large community park we're developing uh, behind Dereford Hospital, which you might have, may have seen includes and things like the first urban uh, UK beaver reintroduction. Net, we're working on nature-based enterprises with the Real Ideas organization and supporting na local nature recovery networks for our urban trees and rewilding corridors. And then finally, uh, we're also working with the National Trust up at Saltram, and that's really looking at kind of landscape scale um, ecological restoration, but also again, how we connect with visitors and, and work within kind of managed and, and listed landscapes as well. So really in terms of the kind of creative commission, I just want to put this slide in, This, in terms of our vision, it, it's about how Plymouth becomes a habitat and there were all habitat managers and how do we um, kind of start to nurture more of a collective um, sense of responsibility and care for our spaces. So I won't, I won't go into that in detail now, uh, with time but again part of this approach part of reaching out to different audiences new audiences is about being quite playful trying innovative things you know not being too afraid to kind of for things to fail and not work um and, and just wanted to touch on the impact of our project because what's really important because this well any kind of work but this is, is an innovation project and the idea is that we try stuff out we test stuff quite quickly we we learn from that and we feed back that back in to our work so it is a very kind of quick fire project quick turnaround and um we, we're kind of keen to learn as fast as we can within the project but then share that learning more widely as well so um one of the things we um that has come out of this process so far through some of the engagement work we've been doing already is this idea around the creative commissions and so we're working with low carbon devon and plymouth mobility hubs um, to look at how we can um, use the kind of creativity that's in this area to, for, from our perspective in Green Minds, to, to see how we can support um, a better nature connection. There's been a lot of work done on this in terms of the University of Derby's Nature Connectedness Research Group and, and the kind of different pathways that people connect better with nature. And we're really keen to look at how creativity and artistic kind of um, arts meet in different media could help support that connection. So in terms of this commission, we're really keen again to kind of look at um, kind of different playful methods about how we can connect with people, um, how we can 
particularly we've got some couple of audience groups we're really interested in in terms of young people and some of the neighborhoods we're working in the west of the city but we really um are kind of keen to see how we can bring some of the uh carbon and climate messages together with some of our kind of nature recovery as well and and kind of make that relevant to different communities in plymouth so that was sorry that was a whistle tour for you i was kind of trying, trying to catch up after um it's never kind of easy that's that's easy. Thank <laughs> so you, yeah. i'll hand over to indy <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you. It's not easy. <laughs> Indy, are you good? Hi. Hi. Yeah, I um, just got a presentation, I think, to come up. There we go. Great. So, hi, everyone. Excellent. I'm Indy you Nuttall. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hi, everyone. I'm Indy Nuttall from uh, the Low Carbon City team within Plymouth, Plymouth City Council, here today to give a brief overview of the Mobility Hubs project and also to introduce the creative commission we have up and coming with Green Minds and Low Carbon Devon. Um, so due to the recently declared climate emergency and Plymouth City Council pledging to be carbon neutral by 2030, there's an urgent need to consider how we in Plymouth move and travel around the city and also how we best utilize our space. As a result, the Mobility Hubs project is being delivered with support from the Transforming Cities Fund for a three year grant period. We aim to deliver in between 30 to 50 multimodal mobility hubs, creating a citywide network. This will provide viable low carbon transport options for local, uh, local residents, visitors and businesses, helping people to reduce private car use. So mobility hubs are going to be a collection of low carbon transport integrated into the existing public transport network. They'll comprise of electric bikes, electric vehicle charging points and electric vehicles, which will be part of a car club. All these services, along with other public transport, will be linked together through a booking system and other facilities such as live information boards will also be incorporated into the hubs to allow users to plan and book their journeys across the city using low carbon transport. The hubs will be a sustainable, future-proofed shared transport system, allowing space for future innovation and new technologies to be incorporated. So from the deployment of the mobility hubs, we're hoping for a number of benefits. See so the reduction of private car use, uh, carbon emissions associated with travel within Plymouth will be reduced as well as congestion. Air quality will be improved, leading to health and wellbeing benefits of local residents partnered with the encouragement of more active travel. The mobility hubs will improve connectivity across the city in a fair and affordable manner, improving employment and business opportunities, whilst also helping work towards uh, reducing mobility uh, poverty and regenerating communities. So we recognise the importance of behaviour change within our project, and this is an element that we really want to actively approach in order to achieve all of the benefits that I've previously mentioned and more. We hope through creating a large scale project such as the mobility hubs, we will ignite local people's interest in low carbon transport and also make it relevant and accessible to as many as possible. We hope to carry out engagement that gets more people asking questions about the mobility hubs and we recognize the more standard engagement techniques do not always reach everyone. We want to use different styles of engagement to interact with wider audiences and begin to prompt behavior change in transport choices citywide. Um, so we really want to use creative engagement techniques to reach wide, diverse audiences by creating fun and exciting creative commissions, which are accessible to as many as possible. Through the creative series with Low Carbon Devon and Green Minds, we want local communities to be able to help shape the creative commissions. We want the work to incorporate educational links to low carbon transports, uh, low carbon transport, its benefits, and also the importance of sustainability as a whole. We want to demonstrate to local communities that the mobility hubs are for everyone and allow them to feel ownership over their local hub. Please keep your eye out for future information surrounding the commissions coming soon. And if you would like to engage uh, with the team on the mobility hubs, please feel free to send us an email at uh, lowcarboncityteam at plymouth.gov.uk. Thank you for listening to me today. I'll now uh, pass over to Emma from Low Carbon Devon. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Indy. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks. So, Emma, over to you. Thanks, Polly. Hi, I'm Emma Whitaker, the Creative Industries Research Fellow for the Low Carbon Devon Project. 
And so the, what we're going to be looking at is um, the Creative Commissions program, which is a collaboration with Green Minds and Mobility Hubs. And the Low Carbon Devon project, just to give an overview, involves a few different areas. So we've got the retrofit of the sustainability hub, which you may have heard a little about earlier, a carbon reduction program in the university buildings, knowledge exchange and internship program, support for Devon SMEs and research. And the research is happening in four different areas. So there's the green and living wall, there's energy efficient buildings, occupant behavior, power electronics and the creative industries area. And the way that we're engaging with the low carbon agenda, we're closely aligned with the Devon Carbon Plan and the Devon Carbon Plan identifies these um, five different key areas, economy and resources, energy, built environment, transport, food, land and sea. And importantly, across all those different areas is this cross-cutting theme, the power of the imagination in enabling change. And that is really what we're talking about today, is how we can imagine a better future, a, a low carbon future. And this aspect of the Devon Carbon Plan, um, Dr. David Sargent at University of Plymouth has been instrumental in including that in the plan and that that's a key part in how um, we're, we're thinking about low carbon. And of course that links with, uh, with what we're doing here in the creative industry section of the Low Carbon Devon project. So we're working with Devon SMEs to develop new products, processes and services. And we're investigating how the creative industries across Devon and beyond are engaging with the low carbon agenda and how can we develop this. And we're also working with umbrella organisations across Devon to create opportunities for creatives to engage in the low carbon agenda. Um, including the Devon Guild of Craftsmen um, and the Sustainable Maker Initiative, which we're going to be talking about next. And we've been writing funding bids and facilitating funding opportunities for creatives to engage themselves and others in the low carbon agenda. So, so this work with mobility hubs and with the Green Minds project is, is one of those projects. So the Creative Commissions programme. So we're launching the Creative Commissions programmes today. Um, and this is going to be a series of commissions, probably around seven commissions um, for Devon creative and cultural sector SMEs. And we want this to be open to all different creative industries from design to music, from heritage to illustration, from games to moving image. Um, so we, we're really open with who we're engaging with in, in these commissions So that for this call. And what we're asking for is an experience of co-creation, working with communities or groups. Um, and this is in, in developing the works. And this is particularly in the area of engaging communities with the ideas, not necessarily with the execution of the work, although it could be that as well. And what we're hoping for is that the, the work will be as, as accessible for people to be involved with as many people as possible. So accessible and to many. And we're creating works that explore the themes of the Green Minds and Mobility Hubs projects that Indy and Gemma have outlined. And the, the commissions themselves are going to be funded for six to eight thousand pounds each around that those figures. And we're launching this summer and the project will last um, project delivery March 2022. And so the details will be coming soon and they're going to be announced on the Green Minds website and the Low Carbon Devon website. So please sort of look out for those for application details. So um, thank you for listening and we hope that you will apply um, or support the projects that are involved and um, uh, thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you so much, Emma. Thanks for that. Um, I'm going to bring back to the front. Yeah. Oh, somebody's already done it for me. Oh, we're all back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for your presentations. Um, we've got a little bit of time now before we move on to the next section for a few questions. And I think, I suppose, I'm gonna start with a question um, around about uh, why bother? Uh, how do we get engaged? And interesting things that we, in the last session that we were talking about, that I was uh, chairing was around about beauty and about actioning, et cetera. So um, I suppose these, uh, these two questions go to Gemma and Indy to start off with, around about um, uh, how, how could people, the, the general uh, people, general public get engaged with these projects? And I suppose the other thing is, uh, is why is it important that we actually have creativity in there? I mean, I, yeah, 
that's my two questions. So I start with you, Gemma. Yeah, sure. Um, I, um, in terms of uh, why we will kind of want creativity in there, I mean, one of the things we're looking at doing is obviously is how uh, there's a lot of evidence about the kind of value of nature, not just for its own sake, but then also in terms of our own health and well-being. And I think obviously there's been a lot of research done in the last year with the pandemic and and the role that nature has played in a lot of people's lives and more people are kind of experiencing it and connecting with it. So I think that there's value in that and, and put with that with the kind of research around nature connectedness and, and the different pathways we experience that is often on a very emotional sensory mm. level and so I think we can look at it in a very scientific way and I'm a marine biologist by background so you have that lens but actually truly when people have that connection and they have the kind of experience those health and well-being benefits are often through more kind of playful creative means that really engage the senses and the emotions as well and having experienced that in other kind of more creative based projects uh, across across Plymouth and, and and other walks of life um, mm. I've really seen that that change and that shift happen and, and sometimes it can just be how uh, people experience their own area and their own community they start to see it and experience it through a different lens so I think that's mm. yeah again to me that's where that value lies yeah so it's very sort of sensorial types kind of yeah mm. development. Um, and what about you um, indeed in how we work with these um, mobility hubs uh, engaging creative aspects within that getting people involved with that mm. um, and realizing it's not just about you know I'd be flipping here from A to B how do, how do we get involved in that in a creative way yeah. Um, so the reason why we want to bring creative work into mobility hubs, there are a lot of um, associated barriers to the new technologies that are going to be incorporated into the hubs, which is intimidating to a lot of people um, who are maybe not um, very confident with, with new technology. So we want to create engagement that is ex accessible to as many as people and start getting people to ask questions and start tackling some of those barriers that people may have in more creative ways. Um, mm. So yeah, we just want to reach as many people in the community as possible, start people asking questions. And I think creative techniques is a great way of doing that. Absolutely, which I think, th thank you. I mean, it, I, I'm, I'm already converted. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, uh, so uh, yeah, preaching to the university. But I think it's always really interesting to think about how we we sh share the knowledge that we have there and our um, ambitions for that to happen. Which is why I suppose Emma, you know, this aspect of um, uh, this creative commission is is such an, a valuable process and a valuable thing that we can engage that. I don't know if there's anything you want to add to what Gemma and Indy just said. And um, so I think the collaboration is really important here. So um, the creative industries. Uh, are excellent They're at communicating ideas, emotions, um, communicating um, ideas around beauty, the whole spectrum of what makes life interesting mm -hmm. and good. And to bring those things together with these really important issues around um, transport and around green minds, about noticing nature, then that, that's a brilliant link that can be made and the creative industries can facilitate that that communication of ideas so I think that it's all about collaboration yeah absolutely fantastic we will stop there I could go on forever um, <laughs> but we'll stop thank you all very much for your presentations and I look forward to actually meeting you in person in the future thank you so, very much thank you thank you very much thank you, thank you. okay so um, our next section um, um, and our uh, second session is titled uh, Green Maker Initiative. And um, I'd like to in, uh, introduce you our three presentation or presenters again, pre presenters again. Um, we've got Laura Wassey from who is the CEO at the Devon Guild of Craftsmen based in Bobby Tracy here in Devon. We then have Paul Reed, who is a business advisor who specializes in charities and social enterprises uh, with a focus on creativity and um, environmental projects. And again, we have Dr. Emma Whitaker, who is our Low Carbon Devon Creative Industries Fellow uh, here at the University of Plymouth. So I'm going to hand over to Laura. I think you're the first one. Hi, Polly. Hi. Oh, hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you? you? <laughs> Bearing <laughs> up. <laughs> yes, just. <laughs> That's right. right. Yes. Yeah. So uh, I think you've got your presentation ready. Yes, I think I have. I, have oh, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Yep. So, you yeah. need to 
start yep. sharing. Yep. Okay. Perfect. And then I will start from the beginning. Yep. Can you see it full? Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay. Great. Um, hi, everyone. My name yep. is Laurel's. Yep. Oh, what do we do? We can just see. It's not a full screen yet, but it's... um. Okay. That one, yep. yep. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Laura Wilsley, and I'm the new CEO of the Devon Gilder Crossman. We are an education charity based in a Grade 2 listed water mill on the edge of Dartmoor in Bubby Tracy here in Devon. The Guild was found in, founded in 1955 by a group of small makers who were enthusiastic about the idea of promoting the best in regional craft work. Uh, the Mill House, uh, we have three gallery spaces here. We host national and regional exhibitions. We have an education space for people to engage in making, and we run an outreach program called Made by Hand, which provides hands-on learning for per, uh, placing professional makers and artists in schools and communities. And we also have a shop and online which supports our makers in selling work. Today, we have over 300 maker members based around the Southwest with a huge range of skills from glass, ceramic, jewelry, and furniture making. We provide a platform for learning, collaboration, and development, as well as income through your shop. Last year, the pandemic proved um, a bit traumatic for our organization and also for our makers. This gave us time to reflect and rebuild an exciting new vision for the future. So with plans, um, we've got a new name coming along. I know some people might be asking about that, but we've got a new strategy and a new business plan and embracing our environmental responsibilities is at the top of our agenda and it's really important to our organization. Our aim is to set an example to our community by demonstrating our impact in reducing our carbon footprint and to educate and encourage our member makers to do so too. Um, last summer, I met with Paul Reed from Drift Advice and also Dr. Emma Whitaker from Plymouth University to, to start to develop an exciting new project where we can celebrate environmental sustainable craft practices within Devon and the Southwest. So um, over to Paul to find out more information. Thank you, Laura. As you know, I'm a big fan of the Devon Guild, so I look forward to the new developments. Uh, Paul, hello. Welcome. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. So thank you for inviting me along. Yes, I just want to give some context, really, of how a project like this has started and uh, how my work with the Devon Guild of Crafts has helped um, take an idea to a point where things might actually happen. So um, Laura and I used to work with each other at the Plymouth College of Art, supporting uh, young students with creative entrepreneurship. And then our path slightly changed. I became self-employed and uh, Laura found themselves at the charity. And I was working on an EU funded project to support social enterprise development projects and uh, went to visit before the pandemic. I think it was February last year, so just before I think locked down and had, the, uh, had the, uh, the joy of looking around a fabulous building, looking at redundant spaces, understanding how we could diversify income streams and obviously increase the education work that they do. And I remember looking out the window and seeing this slightly tired, uh, non-moving uh, wooden wheel um, needing some love and attention and asked the question quite simply, why isn't the wheel turning? And this kind of started, you know, this, this project to the point of where we are now. So Laura spoke to the board and asked a bit more history about the wheel and the board and theory were, were happy about the idea of getting the wheel turning. So we wrote a business proposal outlining the benefits of restoring the wheel and what it could do. You know, a little bit of energy generation mixed with becoming a beacon for sustainability for the charity. And as I said, this sort of kick-started this whole project. And I, and I want to sort of talk about, you know, how we define this. And we wanted to create a mission statement that was this, that was to showcase the link between the arts and craft sector and the environment. And we wanted to make sure that that doesn't want, wasn't tokenistic, but it was actually tangible, something people could see and believe in. So the first stage, as always with all these things, is how do you get the finances to make these ideas happen? So we were successful in submitting a viability grant from the Architectural Heritage Fund, and that gave us a budget for your engineer, architects, and other, and other specialisms to, to review the building and understand what the potential was. Again, with the aim of being the hook about this charity becoming a, an example of best practice in um, creative sustainability. And we want to know how do we make sure we have an impact? So this, you know, the charity knows it wants to become more environmentally aware, but how do we do this credibly? And this is where the links with Low Carbon Devon came in. So I was aware of the project and um, I used the wheel, getting the wheel turning as a hook to start the conversation. 
and we met the team at Low Carbon Devon. And um, Emma came in and was brilliant. And she talked about, you know, the options that are available and gave some examples of creative arts initiatives that were more than just kind of tokenistic words and statements, but were really practical and tangible and allowed people to buy into this, this vision. So that's kind of brought us to the point where we are now. And, and in terms of my work, the next step is completing this viability plan, outlining what the potential of that wheel can do in terms of generating electricity but also becoming this kind of ambassador for sustainability and a, and a tool for education. And the next step is to secure some more funding so we can do some more detailed research in how we get that wheel turning and how we utilize, best utilize redundant spaces for education purposes within the building. And also continue to work with the likes of Low Carbon Devon and um, organizations like Climate Action Bovi, who are really interested in, in an arts installation using power from the wheel. So it's really, really very exciting. And, and I just wanted to give some context about how this project started, what the next steps are. And I'm gonna hand over to, to Emma now, who's gonna talk more about the initiative that she's developing in partnership with the charity. Excellent, thank you so much, Paul. That's fantastic. I look forward to it, listening and watching the developments. Good, thank you. So, Emma. Thanks, Polly. Hello. Hi. So um, I'm going to run through the Green Maker Initiative now. Um, so as um, Paul and Laura have said, this is a collaboration um, with Devon Guild of Craftsmen, um, assisted by Paul from Drift. Um, so the Green Maker Initiative is based on the work of Creative Carbon Scotland's Green Arts Initiative, which has been successfully run since 2013 and is helping Scottish arts organisations to monitor and manage their environmental impact. And it also provides resources and support for the different organisations through networking. And then uh, Creative Carbon Scotland developed the Green Crafts Initiative, which was aimed at supporting individual Scottish makers committed to reducing their environmental impact. So the Green Maker Initiative is very much based on the research which has been done at um, Creative Carbon Scotland and drawing from the best practice there and developing that in the Southwest context. And so the Greenmaker Initiative will be hosted on the Guild's website, but it is al already, the initial um, work's been done there by Laura. And it's targeted at makers in the Southwest. Uh, it's free for anyone to join and you don't need to be a member of the Guild um, so the Guild are kindly hosting this and supported by Low Carbon Devon and other um, funding, but this um, is free for anyone to join and we really encourage that. We really want it to be for all makers across the Southwest and potentially beyond. So what is the Green Maker Initiative? So the Green Maker Initiative um, is a Green Maker pla uh, pledge. Green Maker Pledge and with a badge, a, a, like a, a stamp or a kite mark. Um, how you get the Green Maker or how you get the Green Maker badge, a badge and membership is by completing a yearly informal report about your actions to monitor, manage and reduce your impact on the environment. And there will be lots of resources to assist in, in that process as well. And Green Makers will also be listed on the Guild website. And so it's all about this um, idea of trust, that people are filling in this report because they really want to, to be doing this within their own practice and, the, and following the guidance of how that's possible within, within their specific areas. And the Green Makers can display the membership credentials on their own publicity as well. So they're also spreading word about the, the importance of looking at the circular processes, looking at the, the whole life cycle of materials and the, the use of the, the end product as well. So, and also how it's produced, of course. So the Green Maker resources will be provided with links to uh, carbon measurement for makers. And also we're starting an access to recycle and share waste materials. So often within craft processes, there are materials which are may be classed as waste, things that aren't needed in the making of that product, but they could be really useful for others. And so how can we share those, those things or make them available for makers to collect and donate? And then helping makers reduce their environmental impact by providing the kind of the knowledge support for that, providing workshops and networks. 
And our first, um, so you can you can put your um, expression of interest on the form, um, which is on the Green Maker Initiative part of the Devon Guild website, um, to express your interest. That's the first stage, and then there's also the the first um, knowledge share, which is going to be on the seventh of July, which is about two weeks' time. The Green Maker Initiative workshop, which is creative practices that tread lightly on the earth, a workshop to develop a sustainable low carbon studio. And we have got some brilliant speakers who are going to be talking about how to do this. So there's um, national experts. So there's Dr. Lauren England um, from University of Dundee, who will be talking about craft and the circular economy, which is her specialism. And um, together with Julian and Leedham, they're going to be talking about practical steps, which they have implemented um, in different places. And also Carol Overy, Creative Carbon Scotland's Carbon Management Officer, who will be running a practical session on carbon footprinting and addressing the environmental impact of creative practices. And um, this is specifically not just the kind of general carbon footprinting, but for creative practices and craft makers. And then Jane Hembrow um, from um, Plymouth Scrap Store will be talking about all the kind of resources which are available um, in scrap stores and materials that, that can be used um, instead of using um, new materials. So now we're just going to hear briefly from um, a Devon Guild member, um, uh, Yuli Sohm, who will give us an insight into her current approaches to reducing her environmental impact. So um, if the video can be played, that would be great. Thank you. and I run Bella Kush, which is a wool related business um, set in, in, uh, on Dartmoor. I'm a member of the Devon Guild and I like to think of myself as a, a green maker. I think the Green Maker Initiative at the Guild is a wonderful idea and I want to tell you a little bit about how I try to um, a stick to a, a sort of ethical and sustainable policy. I, I work with wool, as I said. There is wool and there is wool. It's not all the same. It's all natural and it comes from sheep, but there is such a wide variety of how wool is produced. So I like to source my wool as locally as I can um, and also from farms that really look after the management of their sheep. And it's not just about that either. So I, I look for th um, things like holistic grazing, so where they're looking after the land as well as the sheep, as well as looking after the, the welfare of the sheep. Um, but I'm also quite interested in the breeds of sheep because some sheep are more resilient than others. So I tend to like the ones that are, are, have a primitive uh, sort of genetic background, such as Shetland sheep, for instance. I get this processed. Um, in an ideal world, I would get it processed down in Buckfastley, but unfortunately that mill has now closed, so it has to go to Yorkshire. I, you know, within this, we are all doing our best. Nothing is perfect, but we're just trying to do our best. But we need to look at everything that we do within our workshops. So sourcing is one thing. And behind me here, I use a minimal amount of um, dyed color in my work. It's mostly mostly um, white or, or gray backgrounds that I use with a minimal amount of dyed wool. I, commission another member of the guild called Isabella Whitworth and she uses natural dyes and I'm so pleased to use her, I have done for many years now. Um, she's so careful about how she sources her dyes um, again as ethically and as sustainably as she ca can. I use linen for sewing some pieces um, linen is a much more sustainable fibre than cotton, but I do also have to use cotton and I use organic cotton when I can. It's not always possible because I can only get the very fine cotton and sometimes I need very strong cotton. So I'm doing my best. Um, I, one of the products that I make is, is kits for felt making. 
and I make my own felt making pads for needling into. Mostly on the internet, you will see um, they're made of sponge, which is a plastic, and I avoid that. So I make my own. I also make my own packaging. So the kit comes in a felt bag. So this is my carefully sourced wool. This is my packaging. And the bag actually becomes the needle felting pad in some cases. So it's about designing things um, with a view to reducing as much as possible and using what you have around you. I also um, I want to talk a little bit about waste. We try to recycle as much as we can, which is kind of a last resort, but I also compost a great deal. I'm going to try and show you my composting tub here, which um, it says uh, for composting and it's composted. So all my little bits go into the into the tub. If you can see, I'm hoping, holding this rather precariously a bit. Hope you can see that. Um, I compost it on site. This is a rented chapel and the grass is mown every month and I layer it with the grass clippings, makes ideal compost. Any metal pieces goes into a box. So that will eventually go for recycling, lots of broken needles and that sort of thing. Cotton reels, sometimes they're plastic cotton reels. I'll send them back to the company hopefully one day and they'll do something with it, reuse them or something. Just do our best. I hope this helps you and encourages you. Thanks for listening. Great. Thank you, Emma. Yes, I've just got one more slide, I think. So um, we just encourage everyone to join the Greenmaker Initiative and also to say that um, the, the badge and the logo is being designed by two 3D design um, student graduates, graduates, I should say, graduates of the 3D design course at the University of Plymouth. Um, excellent students, um, Ian and Oscar McNaughton. Um, and they are going to be producing this beautiful object and also the, 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 the stamp, which will, can go on people's um, publicity, their own publicity. Um, so we encourage you to do that and, and also um, ask you to, to come to the workshop, which is on the 7th of July. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, can I bring back, can we bring back Paul and that one, that one. Oh, I can, look, I can add people. There you are, look. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much. It sounds like a fantastic project. Um, we've got a little bit of time, so I'm just going to start doing a little bit of quizzing um, for you, the three of you. Quite particularly, so we've got uh, somebody asking um, in the chat around about um, whether this screen is for this for Devon and Cornwall only, which clearly at this point it is. Um, uh, so, the person who's, I don't know if there's sound in the background there. Is going, it's going to take a mute somebody. Maybe not. Um, so, I suppose my question to you is, um, who is the audience? Um, you can come to this workshop or, um, on, the, on the 7th of July. And um, will, will you be there? What will you be contributing to, to it? So, if I start with, uh, maybe start with Laura. Okay. Um, so we are, well, the Synth of July is a free workshop where we are going to be launching the Green Maker Initiative. Um, we are encouraging all makers from um, uh, all skills, all backgrounds to come definitely to the workshop. Um, we are not, there's no, um, it, it doesn't have to be for the membership of the uh, Devon Guild. It, yeah, we want to support craft within the Southwest and also support the kind of environment the environmental and the sustainability of this. Um, it, I think it's really important um, development within your practice that you're, you've got this sustainable um, outlook. Um, I think it'll be great for collaboration. Um, and I think it'll be a really positive network of makers. That's what I, that's the kind of legacy of this project actually, that it will be a really good network, um, a, a base, a, um, yeah, a network, a resource. Um, yeah, and it will encourage, I think, 
I think after the workshop, there'll be more um, information about how to. I think me, Emma and Paul have discussed this already about, um, I think some makers are like, how am I going to do this? You know, I've got a kiln. How am I going to, you know, recycle? How am I? And I think the workshops that Emma has um, put together are going to be fantastic. And I think there's going to be a lot of information, really exciting information in there. So, yeah. So you don't have to be a member of the Guild. You have some kind of maker or maybe even somebody who's just, sort of sort of process of creative creativity yeah emma do you want to yeah um so, so the the green maker initiative is open to the southwest and i notice in the comments that someone says it's just Evan and cornwall so i think we'd say the whole of the southwest could in, include somerset uh, it could include dorset um it could sort of spread further that direction so the, the southwest um in the broadest sense but in terms of the workshops which are supported by low carbon devon um, anyone can apply, can come to the workshops. So, um, green, joining the Green Maker Initiative, we're aiming that at the southwest. Um, but come to the workshops. Come to any of. It's open to everyone because um, it, it's promoted through the Low Carbon Devon um, project. So, every, anyone can come to the workshops. But you need to register, and you can do that by going onto the um, University of Plymouth um, website, Low Carbon Devon website. We've we'll put the link in. The chat um, and register your place. Fantastic. And um, Paul, I think um, what you were saying about kind of this whole uh, what your interests are about working with charities and environmental projects, etc. And um, just as a kind of quick one, are, 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 will you be in, in involving yourself in the making in this project? Are you somebody who is? Um, I'm just trying to think about how, who else we can get involved here. Are you anyone who remotely makes anything? Um, I, I play, I, yeah, so I play music. That's my kind of creative outlet. So I play in a band and things like that. So that's my kind of creative outlet. But I am in, genuinely interested in all creative disciplines. I, that's why I enjoyed my time at Plymouth College of Art, working with young people. So um, I will be encouraging people to attend. Um, I think that you're recording, aren't you? I think people can access it after the day. So if people can't attend on their day, I, I encourage people just to get talking about it. And, and this is why, you know, when we started this project, Laura and I, we had no idea that when we first talked about what the Devon Guild of Craftsmen could be that yeah. it would come to this. So it's just really interesting to see how you know, the water wheel idea has just completely changed into a whole host of other things. So mm -hmm. I'm just really positive to speak about the charity's ambitions to be taken seriously on a sustainable basis and, and see where it leads. Fantastic, great. Uh, we're in time. Uh, thank you all very much. If I can bring, I'll bring um, Indy back and who else is still here? back to thank you all for your presentations today yes as Paul was saying oh, oh something was going on there um this is really cool. so um i really will encourage people to really look back and look up what you say thank you everybody take care bye bye, bye. Thank you. bye, -bye.